Shall we rise up to pray? Our God in heaven, we thank you for this retreat. Thank you, Lord, for your desire to prepare everyone for the coming of the Lord. We are praying, Lord, that you help us to take the opportunity and to receive the grace from you to be ready in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you cleanse every one of us. Purge and purify every one of us. Make us ready for the coming of our Savior, Lord, in Jesus' name. Implant your love in every heart. We pray, Lord, that your love will saturate and penetrate every heart, every soul, every spirit, and everything we do, everything we say, the way we live, will be according to the love that indwells the believer in Jesus' name. Help us to love you with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. Help us to love each other as Christ has loved us. And help us, Lord, by your grace and your strength, will carry out your commandment and your will every moment of our lives in Jesus' name. Be with us by your spirit even now. Help us, Lord, to receive everything you are revealing to us. And we pray that the blessings of obedience will be upon everyone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you very much. We're coming to our session of studying the word, Bible teaching. And we're looking at the great commandment in the family. I want to remind you that the theme of this retreat is readiness for Christ's coming. And the reason why we're doing this is because of what the Lord himself had said. It tells us in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, Behold, it cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth will wail because of him, even so, Amen. And then he announces to us, he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. He tells us that the word we're hearing about the coming of the Lord is given out and proclaimed by the Lord Almighty. But he tells us we must prepare so that We'll see him in peace. Revelation chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 25. It says that which ye have already hold fast till I come. It's telling us that if there is anything that gets us ready and prepares us, we must hold firmly everything he has taught, everything he has done, Everything he has given. This is not the time to hold with loose hands our salvation, our sanctification experience, our holiness experience, or to hold the doctrine of the Bible or the commandments of the Lord with loose hands. If we're going to see him when he comes, it will demand that everything he has given, everything he has done, everything he has performed, we hold with firm hands and not let go chapter 3 revelation verse 11 behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown it says you can lose your crown you can lose your reward you can lose everything you've done everything he has done even since you became a believer he says if you're not going to lose your reward you're not going to lose your crown on that final day the crown of life the crown of righteousness the crown which he gives as a reward to the people that love and know him you will hold that fast which you have so that that crown will not be lost chapter 16 
verse 15 behold i come as a seed it's coming suddenly it's coming unexpectedly it's coming when many people will not be awake and ready blessed is he that watches means that you have to be very watchful there is a satan around the corner that will lie to take what you have from you there are thieves around the corner spiritual thieves they are that will want to take away what you have it says your watch and you keep your garments lest you walk naked and they see your shame chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 12 and behold i come quickly it must be definite that christ is saying this over and over and he tells us repeatedly i come quickly suddenly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be and just before the last verse of the bible is reaching it tells us in verse 20 he which testifies the six says surely i come quickly surely there should be no doubt in your mind because there's no doubt in the mind of christ that he is coming suddenly will come unannounced he will come unexpectedly he will come at the time when many people are not ready amen even so come lord jesus it's on that basis readiness for the coming of the lord it's on that basis preparedness for the coming of the lord that we're looking at every subject every message in this retreat and because of that we're looking at the great commandment that he has given to his family the great commandment in god's family in matthew chapter 22 matthew chapter 22 reading from verse 37 matthew chapter 22 verse 37 jesus said unto him and jesus says unto every one of us thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thine heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and the great commandment the lord jesus christ reaffirmed that on the basis of god creating us because we're creatures of his hand he made us he molded us and because he has given us life in gratitude to god the creator we ought to love him without him we will not be here without his creation we will not be here without his love his grace his mercy that he wants to give existence to us you and i will not be here in gratitude to him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thine heart with all thy soul with all thy mind if you have any part of your heart any part of your life loving any other sin the lord wants to remind you what god created those things you have a wife god created her husband god created him you have a building god made all those things you used in the building you have a car he used everything you use in having that car he makes that even the money you spent and therefore because he made you and because everything you have actually belongs to him it says in gratitude you don't make an idol of any other sin you don't love any other sin you don't place your love on those created things thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart with all thy soul with all thy mind by creation he has the right to demand your love entire love complete love unending love impartial love a love that permeates everywhere in your heart by creation number two by redemption because he redeemed you you would have been lost whatever you have in this world without his redemption 
eventually you will spend eternity in hellfire you will be forgotten anything you've done on earth anything you have amassed on earth there will be no association between you and them you are dead you are gone and you are suffering forever but he says no you will not perish i love you and i'm going to redeem you i'm going to save you by creation he has the right to demand your love by redemption now because he's even going to give you heaven and you're going to live in those mansions on high forever it says because of redemption thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind he could have created you and left you on your own he could have redeemed you and he could have left you on your own but it says because is your sustainers is sustaining you and every day is keeping you he keeps you alive physically he keeps you alive spiritually he says you have no other thing to do he's thinking about you every day you should be thinking about him every day he sets his affection upon you every time you should set your affection upon him every time he says by the sufficiency of his sustaining power because of the sufficiency of his sustaining grace you shall love the lord thy god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and the great commandment think about this what's the first and the great sin not to love the lord your god with all your heart not to love the lord with all your soul to have a reservation a part of your heart a part of your soul a part of your mind on another thing maybe on yourself maybe on a man maybe on a woman maybe on property maybe on position maybe on any other thing that will be the first and the great sin because that's a sin against the first and the great commandment it tells us in verse 39 and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy thy neighbor as thyself the lord is saying because as i created you i created him it's not just existing in isolation his life belongs to him me his life is derived from me because of that not because of who he is not because of him because of me who created him love him as yourself i created you i created him you love me you must love him and because of redemption when that neighbor now becomes a believer he is saved by the blood of the lamb i count him so precious i count him so important i count him so indispensable and i shed my blood for him because of the love i bestowed on him because of my redemption of him you will love him as yourself and because i make him to still stay here on earth i'm sustaining him i'm keeping him you cannot look down him i am not looking down him i appreciate him i love him and i am blessing him you cannot hate the one i love you cannot hate the one i have redeemed you love your neighbor you love your brother love your sister as yourself and then he tells us on these two commandments hang all the law and the statutes and the prophets what's that saying he's saying number one every other commandment of god is based on love god love your neighbor every interpretation of the word of god is based on love god and love your neighbor if you interpret any part of the word of god that allows you to hate your fellow man hate your brother hate your sister that's the wrong interpretation if you interpret any commandment of god and your interpretation is contrary to loving god with all your heart all your soul all your mind if it gives allowance permission to anyone or to yourself to love god partially to love god half-heartedly that's a wrong interpretation because it says on these two commandments of loving god and loving your neighbor on those two commandments hang the law and the prophets 
and the Lord give this in particular to his own children to his own followers to his own disciples and this is the great commandment in God's family and then we have Matthew chapter 28 I'm reading from verse 18 Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth the power here number one ability all ability is given to me i can do all things all power is given unto me in heaven and earth it also means authority all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth what does that mean he has authority over the angels in heaven he can command them he can send them forth he can tell them what to do because all authority belongs to him in heaven and also in earth he has authority over everything on earth he demonstrated that when he was still here on earth authority over the sea authority over the storm authority over all men authority over all flesh authority over sickness authority over satan think about the authority he has over every believer again by creation again by redemption again by sustaining power he has authority over you and because he has authority over you he has authority over your time all your time authority over your skill or your skill authority over your talent or your talent he says go ye therefore because i have authority all authority in heaven all authority on earth go ye therefore and you cannot say no i can't go and then he's asking you who is in authority over your time over your talent over your skill over your life over your days over your eternity over your existence no you cannot say i cannot because he has authority authority in heaven authority on earth and he says go ye therefore and teach all nations and the one who has authority over everything in your life and around your life he is the one he can take away he can add all those things that disturb you all those things that you say because of this i don't have time i'm holding on to this i have to do this i have to do this i have to do this in a moment of time he has authority over all those things on earth and in heaven he can take all that away and he says okay what are you going to do now go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you the one in authority and the one who has all power says i am with you always even unto the end of the world and everybody said amen we say amen to his authority we say amen to his commandment we say amen to his uh, power over our lives great the great commandment in god's family there are three things we're going to examine as we look at this message number one the great characteristics of god's family before we can talk about the commandment itself to the family what's the family of god who are in the family of god who are the people that belong to that family how do we know them how do we identify them the great characteristics of god's family number two the great commandment in god's family when you enter into a country you find out what are the laws of that country if you live in that country and if you want to remain in that country you must understand what are the laws there the rules there what is permitted what is not permitted on that basis 
as you fulfill those laws you're able to live there the same thing the family of god you're born again you're coming to the family of god you need to find out what's the commandment here what's the lifestyle here what's the law here what's the rule here you need to know that so that you will know how to live as a member of the family of god the great commandment in god's family number three the great commission for god's family the great commission for god's family understand this commission is only for the members of the family sometimes we have people outside the family and they're trying the worst they can do they think they're doing the best they can do and uh, to carry out the commission is not for them they're strangers to the commission they are strangers to the covenant they are strangers to the work that belongs to the family and it's only the people who are members of the family of god that can do this sometimes you find people like the pharisees they run across the sea and they run across every land to make one proselyte to make one convert and they're trying they say they're evangelizing they're evangelizing but the commission doesn't belong to those who are not members of the family of God. Sometimes you find a whole denomination of people. And they do not know what it means to be members of the family of God. And they're very active. And you see cyber, they are poster here. And they try to evangelize. Listen, the commission is for the family. The great commission for God's family actually they are not serving the lord in all those things they're doing until they become members of the family of god the commission is not for them we're coming to number one what's number one over there the great characteristics of god's family and we need to understand this very well you need to understand this yourself so that you will be able to answer the question am i a member of the family of god am i in because you have to find that out before you see your part in the commandment and the commission romans chapter 6 and i'm chapter 9 and i'm reading from verse 6 romans chapter 9 verse 6 not as though the word of god has taken on effect for they are not all israel which are of israel they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Those who are born of the flesh. And they count themselves as Israelites. The word of God says no. They are not all Israel, who are of Israel. There must be another characteristic. Apart from the physical birth. Apart from I was born there. I belong to them there must be something more than that we're looking at john chapter 2 john chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 23 now when he was in jerusalem at the passover in the feast day many believed on his in his name when they saw the miracles which he did here is where many people take a wrong step or they have a mis uh, misunderstanding concerning who are members of the family of god i believe i believe i believe hold on what do you believe who do you believe how do you believe what's the consequence of that believing when they saw his miracles many believed on him look at verse 24 but jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and he needed not that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man he knew what was in them they believed in miracles they didn't believe on jesus christ as savior as redeemer as the only way 
to God. They did not believe as the only one that will make the sacrifice and reconcile them unto the Lord. They saw a miracle. I believe. I believe. I believe in miracles. You can even go beyond believing in miracles and do miracles yourself. You are still not part of the family. Ma Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, I'm reading here from verse 21. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 Not everyone that says unto me Lord, Lord Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven But he that doeth the will of my father Which is in heaven Many will say to me In that day Lord, Lord Have we not prophesied in thy name And in thy name have cast out devils And in thy name have done many wonderful works and then when i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity their inside internal life has not been cleansed they were still working iniquity and somehow they believe that god is mighty unbelievers believe that somehow they believe that god is a great god who has created the whole universe unbelievers believe that too even satan believes that they believe that as god was powerful in the days gone by god is powerful today the unbelievers believe that too they believe that jesus christ is a mighty miracle worker unbelievers believe that too and they believe that even jesus can heal the sick today and when they tell people that jesus can heal them today the people accept and on the basis of accepting that truth not on the basis of the way he lives not on the basis of the way he actually conducts his life on the basis of the fact that they say god heals yes i accept jesus heals yes i accept if we pray in the name of jesus the name of jesus will heal you and so the people accepted and they are healed and they took that to me and now a member of the family of god i'm working miracles i'm healing the sick i'm prophesying balaam prophesied even the ass spoke in tongues and spoke the words with the tongue of a man that doesn't make that ass a child of god that doesn't make that ass a member of the family of god i believe in miracles that's not enough i'm working miracles that's not enough there must be something beyond just working miracles seeing miracles and prophesying that makes us children of god i want you to look at um, second timothy second timothy we're looking at chapter three and we're looking at verse five second timothy chapter three and in verse five it says having a form of godliness a form of godliness externally they act like the children of god externally they act as if we're there too where we still to you but it says but deny the power thereof from such turn away the power to overcome sin that one they deny the power to live a victorious life that one they deny and the power to obey the commandments of god that one they deny and yet they have a form of godliness they go to church they are baptized in water either as infant or adult they take the holy communion but they deny the power of god it says turn away from them they are not part of god's family titus chapter one in titus chapter one reading from verse 16 it says they profess they testify they proclaim that they know god but in works they deny him the character is different the lifestyle is different the disposition very different interact with them in business and you will know who they are interact with them in your family you will know who they are commit something like money into their hands you know who they are you cannot trust them they are not faithful when they see money 
money is their master it controls them they steal out of it they do whatever they want to do with it and then they tell you lie they profess that they know god but he was they deny him being abominable disobedient and to every good work reprobate they are reprobates they are not members of the family of god we need to understand when it says the great commandment in god's family who are the members of the family of god and there are people during this uh, december period you will see them in their colorful dresses and you will see them go they go shopping and they say well we're shopping for christmas and you ask them what is christmas and they say you don't know then they begin to tell stories how christ was born how this one happened how that happened how are you sure that uh, december 25 is the birth day of the lord jesus christ oh they say everybody believes that and we believe that anyway don't waste my time i need to go shopping but they say there is no money around now that the economy is biting hard and they say even though the economy is biting hard we need to buy this and buy this and then the nightclubs are filled up the drinking multiplies traveling up and down multiplies i don't say children of god first first timothy chapter five in first timothy chapter five we're looking at verse six first timothy chapter five verse six but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth she that liveth in pleasure the nightclubs the drinking the smoking the hard drugs the fornication the adultery looks like uh, the way they understand christmas christmas is for drunkenness christmas is for fornication and christmas is for the old boyfriends and old girlfriends to come back again it's for the pleasure for the lust of the flesh those are not children of god you know that she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth in second kings chapter 17. second kings chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 33 and verse 34. second kings chapter 17 verse 33 it says they feared the lord don't stop there if they feared the lord you think those are the children of god there's something again in their lives it's not loving God with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind. It says they fear the Lord and served their own gods. They feared the Lord on Sunday and they served their own gods during the week. They say, Abba, Father, on Sunday, a Father, which art in heaven on Sunday. And then during the week, they go to, they go to their idols to their gods and to their occultism and they go to all those evil things traditional things they fear the lord and serve their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from this they had overcome some other nations and they say god has given us victory we are victorious over these people they learned about their gods and they serve them verse 34 unto this day they do after their former manners nothing has changed lying before lying continues stealing before stealing continues fighting before fighting continues fornication fornication continues adultery messing up with other people's wives other people's husbands that continues they say well we were christians we we're born we're children of god they even claim to be born again nowadays but nothing has changed until this day they do after their former manners they fear not the lord in reality they fear not the lord neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances or after the law and commandments which the lord commanded the children of judah whom he named israel who then are the children of god how do you know whether you are a child of god or not how do you mark yourself out and you can say i am a child of god let god himself tell you who are his own children the characteristics great characteristics of god's children of god's family in second corinthians chapter 6 
2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate says the Lord here is the Lord saying you want to be a child of God you want to show that you are a child of God here is the evidence here is the mark here is the characteristic wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate says the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you before that I can't receive you I can't accept you still chewing your tobacco I cannot receive you still belonging to the occult I cannot receive you and still committing the fornication I cannot receive you still in drunkenness I cannot accept you come out from among them and touch not don't drink don't even touch don't smoke don't even touch don't worship idol don't even touch touch not the unclean thing don't commit fornication don't even touch her don't touch the prostitute have nothing to do with her touch not the unclean thing anything that makes you unclean makes you unholy anything that will defile you don't even touch and i will receive you and i will be a father unto you listen to this and you shall be my sons and my daughters says the lord almighty the characteristics of those who are members of the family of god they are the people that know sin as sinful they know sin as awful they know sin as horrible they know sin as dangerous and they come out of sin and they will not even touch those are the people they have repented of their sins they have believed on the lord jesus christ and as they believe after that repentance then they are, they are now children of god the characteristics of god's family john chapter 1 reading from verse 12 but as many as received him not as many as received miracle that's receiving eight as received baptism that's receiving eight as received him to them gave him power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name Matthew chapter 12 in Matthew chapter 12 the Lord Jesus makes it very clear who are members of the family of God Matthew chapter 12 verse 49 and he stretched forth a hand toward his disciples and said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do not just profess not just say not just have a form of godliness whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother that's the family of god they are born again they have repented and turned away from sin and they believe on the lord jesus christ and grace has entered coming to them and by that grace they are now able to do the will of god we're looking at john first john chapter three first john chapter three and we're reading from verse one it says in first john chapter three verse one behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god that we should be called members of the family of god sons of god therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not you understand that we are not in their register they don't know us if they check up our names in their register they will not find our name there because the name of jesus was not in their register they didn't accept him they didn't believe him they didn't recognize him they didn't approve of him it was not in their register but god approved of him behold my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and the same thing that happened to christ has happened to us they don't recognize us 
they don't accept the men of fly. They don't accept the righteousness we hold. They don't accept the holiness we believe. What men of law, the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God, the sons of God. Then he says, Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. He's saying, we don't wait until we die to become the children of God or sons of God. Now, at this present time, we get born again here on earth. We get saved here on earth. We get sanctified here on earth. And it is right now, at this present time, when we get saved, that we become the children of God. Behold, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear. What we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Verse 3. And every man in any church, every man in any denomination, you see many people today, they have made a great mistake. Like, it's like if a child will tell you, I go to a great school. Uh-uh, don't tell me that. Are you a great student? I go to a great school. Don't tell me that. What kind of student are you in that great school? Somebody says, I live in a great city. Don't tell me that. What kind of city scene are you in that great city? Somebody says, I belong to a great community. Don't tell me that. What kind of person are you in that community? I go to a great church. And once you see the sign of that church, on my car you know that i am somebody no not at all every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure that you belong to this church or any other church doesn't say much it depends on what you do with what you are hearing what you are learning as you accept what you are learning and it works out in your life that's what matters that's why it says every man in whichever church that has the soap in him purifies himself even as he is pure whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law that one is not doing the will of god for sin is a transgression of the law and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins in him is no sin Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. He does not take delight in sinning. He does not take sin as a habit. He does not take sin with pleasure. He does not look forward to committing sin, planning to sin, and uh, you know, executing that plan and living in sin and then it becomes hard in that and he says everybody knows me i will do what i want to do i will say what i want to say i will go wherever i want to go if they don't like it that's their business that's my choice that's my way of life that's not a child of god the one that takes pleasure is sinning the one that makes a habit of sinning the one that deliberately goes into sinning and he doesn't bat an eye he doesn't wink he doesn't he doesn't even feel it at all that's not a child of god whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth has not seen him neither known him little children let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous that's the characteristic of a real child of God. He that doeth righteousness is righteous as even as he that is righteous. It's not he that professes righteousness. He that believes the doctrine of righteousness. He that doeth. He that doeth. His language shows that he believes that righteousness. His demeanor, his character, his conduct shows he believes that righteousness. His sensitivity to resisting evil resisting sin shows that he actually believes in righteousness he that committed sin verse 8 is what he that committed sin i'm waiting for you is what of the devil 
I'm surprised. You find the people, you know, a policeman that catches them. And then they even uh, gave uh, bribes. And after they've given the bribes, they say, uh-uh, my friend. By the way, which church do you go? Don't mention deeper life. Because you do not show that you believe you belong to a church that believes in holiness. You're of the devil. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sin it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot see. He doesn't want to. He cannot because he doesn't want to. He cannot because he says, that's not my desire. I don't delight in that. That's not my heart. Manifest. Here is how you find the characteristics of the real children of God, the family of God. It are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his neighbor. It tells us in First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. It says, as obedient children, there's a family of God, obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. If you're no more ignorant of the demands of God, you're no more ignorant of the requirements of the gospel, then you will not say, well, I didn't know that you know because the spirit of god abides in the child of god but as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for i am holy those are the characteristics of god's family now we come to the great commandment in god's family mark chapter 12 mark chapter 12 the great commandment in god's family here the lord is uh, telling us himself here are the words of jesus christ mark 12 reading from verse 29 somebody had asked a question and jesus christ answered the question and after jesus answered the question the man replied again and responded to the answer of jesus and then jesus passed a final comment that makes us to know the great commandment in god's family mark chapter 12 verse 28 it says and one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well asked him which is the first commandment of all this man asked the lord jesus christ can you tell me the first commandment of all the greatest commandment of all the commandments and jesus answered him the first of all commandment says this hear o israel the lord our god is one lord and thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength this is the first commandment here the lord jesus made it very clear if you're thinking about a child being a child of god you want to be a delight of the lord you want to know the first commandment of god and you want to give yourself to that as a priority here it is you will love the lord that means you will love him and love everything he loves take delight in everything he takes delight in and run the way 
of his pleasure not your own pleasure you will love him number one with all your heart number two with all your soul number three with all your mind number four with all your strength you know what that does is taking in your body your strength it's taking in your soul it mentions there your mind and your soul it's taking in your spirit is taking the totality of man because man is spirit soul and body all together you are a living soul and the spirit gives you that life and you live inside the body and it's a body that manifests and demonstrates the strength and the power and the skill you have and it says with the totality of your being it says with the entirety of your being from the point of your thinking to the point of your planning to the point of your doing with your inner knowledge and your outside ability with your brain and your mind with your knowledge and your skill with everything you have going for you in existence you love him love god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength lay everything at his feet i'll do your bidding i'll do your will i will delight in whatever you want me to do i will manifest my love in that way that's the first commandment and the second is like it namely this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself there is none other commandment greater than these that's a great commandment in God's family. Look at verse 32. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love your neighbor to love his neighbor as himself is more than whole bunch offering and sacrifices you know the point this man had correct doctrine this man accepted correct doctrine this man said what jesus has said no other doctrine can replace that but see what jesus said in verse 34 and when jesus saw that he answered discreetly he said unto him thou art not far from the kingdom of god you are not there yet that you answered question correctly doesn't mean you are there yet you accept sound doctrine doesn't mean you are there yet you are search you accept and you give a good response to what jesus has said doesn't mean you are there yet i believe the bible from cover to cover because the bible is all of everything in the bible hangs on these two commandments you love god with all your heart all your soul all your mind all your strength and you love your neighbor as yourself you have accepted that that doesn't mean you are in yet but you are not far take another step repent be born again have jesus as your personal savior and let him do recreative work in you then you'll be there you know what you can be coming to the church i accept everything they say i will never argue with anything they say because they show us from the bible they open from chapter to chapter and they open from one book of the bible to the other i accept that doesn't make you a child of god yet that's good that's good believe sound doctrine that's great have it in the head that's great let it transfer from your head to your soul to your spirit to your mind and give everything you've got to obedience to the word of god it's not mental assent it's not i accept it i believe it i can even write a note on it i can write an outline on it that's not enough you must have a real 
bona fide experience of a real child of God. Love him with all your heart. Love him with all your soul. Love him with all your strength. Love him with all your mind. Let it be a practical scene we can see. Well demonstrated. Love him like Abraham loved him. That's love. When God said, Abraham, bring your son, your only son. He didn't argue. God gave that son to me happily and joyfully, cheerfully, willingly. I gave it back to him. That's love. Love him like Moses loved him. That he walked with God as if he saw the invisible. And then he counted the riches of Egypt of this world as refuse, as nothing. Love him like Ruth loved him. That he said, don't tell me to go back from you. Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. Love him like Peter loved him. We must do what we have heard and seen of him. Love him like John, the beloved, love him, loved him. And love him like Paul loved him. That he said, none of these things move me. He was willing to stake his life on the commandment of the word of God. When you love him like that, with all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and nothing is too great for you to give up. If he demands that you give it up, that's the love is talking about. It's practical. It's personal. It's experiential. And it's something you can see something you can tell this is love let me ask you have you ever given anything up for god something that looks important to you essential to you almost like part of your life and your friends and your neighbors thought you could never do without that thing you came into the gospel and then you learned that that thing is not appreciated by the word of god and that thing is contrary to the commandments of the lord as important as that thing appear to be to you are you able to give it up for the glory of god and because of the commandment of god that's the practical thing we're talking about deuteronomy chapter 30 in deuteronomy chapter 30 i'm reading here from verse 6 deuteronomy chapter 30 and we're reading from verse 6 it says and the lord thy god will circumcise thine heart this old covenant they had been you know thinking about the circumcision made with hands a circumcision that earthly father will do for them a circumcision that a professional circumciser will do for them but this one now this is by the lord himself he'll take something out of you what receives the will of God? What receives the love of God? What receives the authority of God in your life? He'll take that away from you. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, that thou mightest, that thou mayest live. There's something within the natural man. That is supposed to giving up everything for God. And it says when God circumcises you. Circumcises your heart. Then you are able to love him with all your heart. All your soul. And all your mind. And then nothing will separate you from that love. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 35. When he does this work in you. It circumcises you. You will not be struggling to love the Lord. It demands something from you. You will not be praying for one year. Oh Lord, help me. That thing is too close to me. Oh Lord, help me. I'm too much attached to that thing. I know I need to give it up. Oh Lord, help me. That thing, I didn't know I could live on this face of the earth. If I don't have that thing, oh Lord, help me. And he's still praying for one year. He knows that this is what to do. He knows that this is the commandment of the Lord. But that thing is separating him from the love of God. When your heart is circumcised. And then all things in this world 
are very light in your uh, in your evaluation and you hold them with loose hands if god demands it and he says this will not be a part of your life it's god you love him like abraham you love him like moses you love him like daniel loved him that he continued to pray even when they threatened him with death in the lion's den he said do what you want to do i love god and i demonstrate that by carrying on it tells us in romans chapter 8 verse 35 who shall separate us from the love of christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or such want you to look at those things there tribulation distress persecution famine nakedness peril sword those seven things there you have not experienced anywhere anything near one percent of any of them terrible things and yet the little thing sometimes it's a little remark why did you do that and the fellow says okay because they challenged me that way it swells up it's like bread a loaf of bread dropped in the water you can't touch him you can't correct him you can't question him how about this my friend how about this my daughter and then they don't love god anymore i want her to serve god they will not allow me i want her to follow god they will not allow me i thought i'll remain in that church but the way they are acting to me i don't think i can be there what have they done show me your love by the things you are able to endure that you say that will not stop me that will not hinder me i love god with all my heart all my somebody stepped on my toe forget about that i love god somebody said something they're persecuting me what persecution and as they said they say about me and they deprived me of this is that persecution go and ask paul the apostle what persecution is he knew real persecution burning persecution what shall separate us from the love of god love of christ tribulation distress persecution farming no job no food no accommodation nakedness no clothes no shelter peril danger sword as it is written for thy sake are we killed all the day long because we're christians that's why they're doing this to me because i'm a child of god that's why they're doing this to me because i'm committed to the lord that's why they're doing that to me if that is so for thy sake are we killed all the day long we're counted as sheep for the slaughter we're not counted as people that merit any position any authority any recognition with all i have done and with all i've sacrificed no they're behaving to me okay if that is so why am i even loving god with all my heart with all my soul people don't understand people don't accept and people don't appreciate okay i'm going to cut it down i've been too zealous i've been too active i've been too yielded to the word of the lord see everything they say every comma every colon and every punctuation mark i observe and see what they're saying about me all right it's now over you don't love god he will circumcise your heart he will cleanse you he will put you he will take away from you that thing that is making you react like that and then you will love the lord with all your heart all your soul and all your mind and then whatever happens you say verse 37 nay in all these things not outside these things in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for i am persuaded this somebody who has gone through it all is gone through that tribulation trouble is gone through that distress and persecution 
He's gone through that farming and hunger. He's gone through that naked in nakedness imprisonment. He's gone through that peril in the sea and peril on the ocean and peril among the false brethren. He's gone through the sword. And then he said, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Paul, what do you mean? Things present. Look at what I'm going through. Look at how they put my feet in the stalks. Look at all the things that happen to me. What do you mean by the things to come? He said, my prayer point is not, oh Lord, take all these things away. He has told me that his grace is sufficient for me. Anything that comes in the love of God, I am ready. You know, uh, there are people, if you don't give them the bread and butter, the sugar and the tea and whatever it is, it's like, uh, you know, uh, why am I serving God? They have not given me this. I'm in that district. I'm in that local church. I'm in that assembly. Why am I serving God? Why do I call myself a member? of the family of God and see now I don't have new clothes I don't have this I don't have that hey it says things presage and things to come it says no height no depths no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God any other creature you know somebody from the other religion comes to you you don't have any job come over you'll get a job you don't have money come over you'll get money you don't have this you don't have that and then you remain in that religion jesus jesus salvation heaven holiness remain there come on if you come over to this side in one week everything will change and will give you position and money and all that it says height depth any other creature shall not be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is the great commandment. And I pray the Lord will help us to keep to that great commandment in Jesus' name. We love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. We love our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, like Christ loves us. First John chapter 3. In 1 John chapter 3, I'm reading here from verse 16. 1 John chapter 3 verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren wife are you willing to lay down your wife your husband rather for the work of the gospel so that souls can be saved and the brethren can be edified your husband has talent your husband has ability your husband has skill your husband is gifted and talented but you're holding on to him don't go too far don't go too far anybody that goes too far they will make him this make him this make him that i won't see your face again i won't enjoy everything i want to enjoy again hereby perceive we the love of god because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren my brother you have certificate no certificate is not as precious as your very life if you lose that certificate once life is there you can get another one you can take another exam you can have another qualification even higher than that are you able to lay down that certificate and serve the lord and be of benefit to the body of christ or it's only on condition they give me this they give me that they approve of this for me approve of that for me and they put me where I believe I belong. A place of honor. Uh, Jesus did not look for that. Loving God and loving your neighbor. The greatest love you can manifest your neighbor. Giving them the way of salvation. The word of salvation. How many of us here, you could be missionaries. 
you could be ministers you could be preachers of the gospel but uh -uh, money is too important to lay down certificate too important to lay down your life too important to lay down if you love your neighbor as christ has loved you he laid down his very life for your salvation you want to lay down your very life for the salvation of others hereby perceive we the love of god because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren i pray god will give us grace i say god will give us grace and will do what christ is calling us to do in jesus name galatians chapter 2 verse 20 in galatians chapter 2 verse 20 it says i am crucified with christ he laid down his life for us i'm willing to lay down my life for the brethren we need to lay down my life for the service of the lord i am crucified with christ somebody is crucified on the cross doesn't argue doesn't fight does not debate does not have contention does not cause division does not scatter anything does not speak in a derogatory manner against god and against the church i am crucified with christ and it takes joy in this i am crucified i'm restrained i'm limited the love of god makes me identified with christ and i'm crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i the eye is crossed out the eye is cancelled the one that will say this is what i want the honor you must give to me the place you must give to me the recognition you must give to me and the my right you must give to me human rights uh, fight within the church he said but yet not yet i but christ lives in me and the life which i now live in the face i live by in the flesh i live by the face of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me and because of that i give myself to god for god and i give myself to the body of christ to the church to the brethren point number three the great commission for god's family the great commission for god's family we know what the great commission is mark chapter 16 in mark chapter 16 we're looking at verse 15 mark 16 15 and he said unto them go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature go ye to all the world lord i've never traveled beyond my local community go ye to all the world lord i don't speak any other language except my local language go ye into all the world lord i don't understand the culture of the people beyond my own country go ye into all the world lord i don't know whether i'll be able to fit in to the climate in all those places go ye to all the world lord my community counts me very important i'm a key figure in my community if i'm not there nothing will move if i'm not there everything will be at a standstill go ye into all the world lord i'm not sure my wife will sign to this one i'm not sure my wife will agree to this one go ye into all the world lord you know i have an aged mother and i have some children and as much as i like to do anything and everything for the glory of god 
there are things that tie me down and there are things i cannot just wave my hand and say bye bye i am going this way all the same go into all the world he has authority over your life he has authority over your existence he has authority because he created you and because he has redeemed you and because you belong to the family of god here is what he gives to the family he says go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 1 verse 8 acts chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 8 acts chapter 1 verse 8 but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem peter there are some people in jerusalem that know how weak you are that's where you denied the lord now you are restored now you are you're going to be empowered you're going to have the holy ghost upon you even in that place where you had made a fool of yourself before you get up and be a witness in jerusalem and in all judea you've been there before go there again and then in samaria you've never been there john look up here you wanted to call fire upon them in your unsanctified state i prayed for you you're saved your name is written in the book of life in heaven you're sanctified all that thing that wants to call fire upon samaritans i'm taking that away from you in samaria go to them preach the gospel to them and unto the uttermost part of the earth don't wait for them to come to you go to them get to them put your finger there i'm coming back to that acts chapter 1 verse 8 look at romans chapter 1 verse 8 acts 1 8 romans 1 8 romans chapter 1 verse 8 first i thank my god through jesus christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world throughout the whole world throughout the whole world acts 1 age it shall receive power when the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in jerusalem in judea in samaria to the utmost part of the earth and then 30 years later between acts 1 8 and romans 1 8 we have an we have an interval of 30 years within 30 years first i thank my god through jesus christ for you all all the believers because your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world this church has existed for more than 30 years where are we in the nation where are we in africa where are we in the world within 30 years those disciples no graduates among them those disciples no elites among them those disciples no highly placed among them those disciples no linguists among them those disciples no politicians among them within 30 years they took the gospel of course paul the apostle eventually came acts chapter 9 and then all the believers they took the gospel to the then known world because everybody was busy they loved the lord with all their heart all their soul all their mind they loved their neighbors as, as themselves and they went with the gospel look at what the members of the church did acts chapter 8 verse 4 acts chapter 8 verse 4 therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word the members of the church then took the word of god they were not waiting for i still need healing i still need a job i still need a wife i need a husband i need to build a house 
I need to go back to school. I need to have certificate. I need to be somebody in society. So that when I preach, people will appreciate what I'm saying. They didn't wait for anything. They said, I've got salvation. I've got enough. I got sanctification. I got enough. I got the baptism power of the Holy Ghost. I've got enough. I've got enough to take me to heaven. If I remain in it, all I need to do now, I need to tell other people, therefore, they that was scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Those who are members, look at ministers. Acts chapter 17, verse 6. Acts 17, verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Those are ministers. Ministers were doing it. Members were doing it. Of the combined effort of the members and the ministers, the gospel went to the then known world. And if we have the same salvation as they had, the same holiness commitment as they had, the same power of the Holy Ghost as they had, the same Christ, the same God, the same Bible, the same commission, the same commandment as they had, will do the same thing they have done be occupied until i come the lord is coming and is reminding us that is what we do for the lord and what we do because of his covenant and because of the commandment what we do because of his calling upon our lives that your reward on the final day when he comes how faithful will you be when he comes, how faithful will he find you? He wants you to be faithful. If you're not a child of God yet, he's calling you that you will be a child of God. You will repent. You'll turn away from sin. You will call upon the name of the Lord and he will save you. He will change your life. He'll bring you into Christ. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And then, as you come into the family, He gives us a great commandment. You love Him with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with everything you've got, and you demonstrate that in a practical way. And you love your brothers and sisters as Christ has loved you, and you love your neighbor ask yourself and then you take this great commission the work he has given you to do in the family of god the work is not just to remain in the church i am doing this in the church it says go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that's what he has given us to do and until you stretch out the hand of mercy and the hand of love to rescue the perishing and to tell the people who are lost how they can come to know the Lord. You have not done enough yet. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why he came and that's why you are the kingdom at such a time like this verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them occupy till i come he's coming till i come he's certain he's coming till i come there's something you're doing from now until you see him until he comes occupy until i come let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer check up are you a child of God? Are you in the kingdom yet? It's not just that I know the doctrine. It's not just that I've been coming to the church. Are you born again? And is the evidence of the new birth in your life, demonstrated in your life, that people can see, people can tell, he is born again. He's a child of God. Demonstrate that, show that by the life you live. And the great commandment that he gives to all members of his family. You love him, 
like Abraham, like Moses, like Ruth, like Daniel, like Peter, like John, like Paul, with all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, all your heart, and then you love your neighbor, love them enough to give them the gospel. 